Well, I was going to start out this video today to show this little Radio Shack music system I got, but uh, my nice new light that I just bought, and I've only had this thing for a few months, it looks like the bulb has burnt out on here. Look at this, it's melted. It was, it was just on. I just had this thing running, and it just went out. And it looks like the tube is fried. This thing only has... You know, probably doesn't even have a thousand hours on it. I bet it's only got a couple hundred hours. I don't use this light other than when I'm when I'm actually filming. That's the only time this thing turned on. So um, yeah, here we go. Cheap crap from China. And there it is. Yes, the bulb is shot. It's one of these 12 watt T4 circular lamps that comes with these uh, newer lights. This thing. Lasted all of I don't know I think I've made I think I've only had this lamp for perhaps six months and it's shot so I'm not too happy I guess I'll have to go and buy a new bulb but uh, I shouldn't have to when the thing's supposed to last a little longer than six months but that's what we have or that's what we're expecting these days nothing lasts like we used to that's for sure and it even comes down to light bulbs not lasting but speaking of lasting here's something that has lasted this thing's ancient take a look at this thing this thing's a realistic it's a clarinet 124 system this is going to be going back to uh, well this is going back to before compact disc players were around so this is going back to a very early 80s it's got a turntable on it with a built-in 45 rpm adapter just pull it up and turn it it'll play your 45s and it's got an AM FM radio in it and a cassette deck let's check this out and see if it works I just had to show this red record this is kind of a special edition one by Huey Lewis in the news and he did an east side and a west side version this is uh, the heart of rock and roll the Canadian version there's an east side and a west side. I wonder what the difference is. So we'll set this thing up, set the speed to 45 and see whether this thing actually works. It works. It sounds like crap. I don't want to play that too long, but I want to see what the difference between the east side and the west side of this record is. Let's see if we can find it. Hey, there's the Canadian version. Let's see what the east side sounds like. That's the east side version. Okay, Toronto gets credit here. And Montreal, there you go. <laughs> So a special version of the Heart of Rock and Roll by Huey Lewis and the News and Sports. Always wanted to say that too. This thing, the turntable is working on this. Let's see what else is or is not working and what we need to do to get this thing 100% working. We know the turntable works. Let's check out the radio. Okay, let's check the radio out on this and see whether the radio works. So here's FM. Okay, so we know that the radio works. Let me check out the tape players. This is probably where the problem is going to be. The problem is probably going to be the tape players, and I bet it's going to be a belt or a motor that's shot. So let's just open them up and see, first of all, whether anything turns. Nope. The caption's not turning. But I can hear a motor running. So I think we got a broken belt. So let's just pop this thing apart and see if that's all that's wrong with it. It's just the belt is broken or falling off. And if you think you've seen cheap stuff before in the past, well, you ain't seen n -n 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 nothing yet. The epitome of cheapness back in the 1980s was anything that came out of Radio Shack. Anything, 1970s, 1980s, anything that came off out of Radio Shack was 
junk. Realistic, Archer, all that crap. We used to joke about it, we called it radio crap and radio scrap. Really, the stuff that they turned out was uh, was very, very <laughs> mediocre. And they did occasionally have a, an item that actually was kind of cool. And I, I had a few of them and I, I wish I still... Oh, I don't think I need... I don't think I need to take those ones out. I think those ones are... had a nut on the bottom. I heard something fall off there, so... Of course, just three screws hold the bottom on this thing. The back feet have a nut on the back of them. Talk about cheap. So when I took the when I took out the uh, when I took out the, the the last foot, you can see this has got a, a machine screw as opposed to a plastic screw, and I just dropped the nut down into the side of it here, which I now have to try and retrieve with a magnet, which I was able to do. So here's the bottom of this thing. The tape decks are going to be in the front. Now you may have noticed it's a little bit quieter in here today than it usually is. Because usually I have my monitor on. And you'll hear it. That's the cooling fan on my LCD that I've been using as my camera monitor for the past uh, several uh, Oh, well, I guess the past year or so I've had that monitor mounted up on the wall and today I'm not using that because I'm I'm using this beast the plasma that uh, has been a, pretty much abandoned with me it was brought to me months ago uh, for repair and uh, the guy that owns it just hasn't come to get it so uh, I'll just keep it there and I'll use that as my camera viewfinder until further notice because it has a nice picture and it's bigger I can actually see things better on it okay so it looks like there's one big belt that uh, drives both of these flywheels from this motor um, it just a, looks like there's a single motor here, is what it looks like. I wonder if I can take this whole deck off. I think I probably can. If I remove the screws on the side here, this whole front will probably just pop right off of it. So two screws on either side of the cabinet, and I believe there's just one screw that holds the circuit board in place. And this whole unit will now separate, and we can turn it over, and we can see what the rest of this thing looks like. And it looks like there's a belt. Well, there's two belts on here. Well, there was at one point. Looks like there was two belts. There's, there's one belt still that's melted to next to nothing that's still looped around this motor. You can see it. You can see it right uh, down here. So we've got one belt here that's melted. We actually have two belts that are melted here. And we have another belt that's melted over here. And the remnants of what remained from the original belt. These belts have all gone gooey. And because I don't have any use for this unit as a tape deck, I don't have any use for it as a record player, to tell you the truth, either. I'm going to pass on changing the belts. I just wanted you guys to see what this thing looks like inside. And uh, maybe I'll put it up for free. I'll just put an ad up on Craigslist or something and say free radio with a turntable. Uh, the cassette decks need four belts to make it work because to replace the belts, it's not a big deal to change them. They're actually quite easy to change on this thing. One screw here would release this motor bracket and just loop the belts over it. In fact, you probably don't even need to do that. You can loop them over over the pulley and through here, right? So there's, you don't even have to take anything apart to change them. But at the cost of belts these days, these belts are probably going to be four or five dollars each. And for twenty dollars worth of belts for something that, if I were to sell it in 
in perfect working condition, I probably wouldn't get $20 for it. So I think now that we've seen what the problem is, we know that the only thing wrong with that, I can hear the motor running. I don't know if it's running at the right speed, but it, it probably is okay. The other motor for the turntable certainly is working. I think what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to reassemble this thing. I'm going to take a picture of it. I'm going to put up on Craigslist and say, free whoever wants to come and get it. And they can have it for a record player because that part still works. And I'm sure someone who's got records that they want to play, um, you know, will appreciate being able to get a, a free record player radio. Anyway, there we go. It's a piece of junk. It's a Radio Shack Clarinet 124 and uh, it's going back together. Very, 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 very simple unit. Very inexpensive unit and uh, not worth spending a penny on. If it had been just one belt that was bad and it was a belt that I had an old belt I probably would have put one on it but uh, it's not it needs four belts I don't have them and I'm not going to spend any money on this thing it's going to be just given away and uh, I always I always try to uh, you know find someone who wants a unit you know to use for the basic functions there's always people out there wanting stuff for nothing so Hopefully it won't be uh, it won't be too hard to find a home for this for somebody who will at least just use it for the turntable. Bottom cover just goes on like that. Two screws and well actually three screws and that's all there is to this unit. We'll catch you in the next one.